Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, the 6600 XT is coming. You could finally be able to buy it along with other GPUs. Intel's gaming GPUs aren't as powerful as we thought, and AMD did what? Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, it looks like AMD could finally release their RX 6600 XT GPU very soon. The story originally comes from an EEC filing by Gigabyte, where you can see the company filed for six RX 6600 XT models. Wait, oh no, that's not good. Anyway, as you can see, all of these models come with 8GB of GDDR6 memory, which essentially confirms the earlier rumors of the card. Remember that the 6600 XT is based on AMD's Navi 23 GPU, and it's expected to come with 2048 cores, while the non-XT model would come with 1792. During CES, we know AMD showed off a GPU that should have been it. Of course, that was promised for the first half of this year, which is almost over. Maybe that means AMD is releasing it in the next few days? I'm not so sure. They could simply be waiting for GPU prices to finally stabilize, to which I have some great news on that. But first, if you've ever had a hard time learning a new language, there's a better way with today's sponsor. Tandem, the app that lets you learn by talking with real people, meaning you aren't just memorizing words and phrases from a book. Instead, you have actual conversations with native speakers across the world, and you get to choose how you'd like to talk, from text to voice notes, audio, and even video calls. Tandem has the options to fit whatever you're most comfortable with. Plus, with support for over 300 different languages, they have something for everyone. So if you're serious about learning a new language, Tandem is the best app for you. And the first 100 people who visit the link in the description will get a free 7-day trial. So check that out today. Next up for today, you may actually be able to buy AMD's new 6600 XT if this next story has a big enough impact on the crypto market. In a new report from Tom's Hardware, the biggest mining gear provider, Bitmain, is stopping most of their sales in China, apparently due to a massive influx in Chinese mining operations selling off their equipment. For those who didn't see my recent video on it, China just began a huge crackdown on mining with some pretty major new restrictions. According to Bloomberg, pricing for Bitmain's top-tier mining rigs have fallen by around 75% since April. Basically, some pretty massive sell-offs are beginning to happen, which could explain the fairly rapid price decrease in some of my recent stories. If this continues for much longer, prices could finally be back to normal in the next few months or so. Next up, it looks like Intel's upcoming XE GPUs may not be as powerful as we originally thought. If you've been following the channel, you know that a recent leak from known leaker Tom Apisak claimed an upcoming XE GPU was just under NVIDIA's RTX 3070 in terms of performance, and that wasn't even Intel's best upcoming discrete GPU. Well, in a video from Red Gaming Tech, it looks like things aren't really all that good. According to him, he believes those numbers come from speculation off of a message board. And I will say that I'd be pretty surprised if that's the case given Tom Mapisak has been really accurate in the past. Still, according to some of Red Gaming Tech's sources, the best Intel GPU, so we're talking the 512 EU part, is less powerful than NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti. Not only that, but the die size is apparently bigger than the 3060 Ti. Meaning, if this is correct, Intel's best XE discrete gaming GPU is far worse than NVIDIA's mid-range part. With that said, he claims the pricing is supposedly between 200 and 300 US dollars. And given the 3060 Ti has an MSRP of 399 dollars, I will say that's not bad. If it's just a bit under the 3060 Ti, yet something like 250 bucks, we could be looking at something like a modern RX 480. Basically, an incredible mid-range deal, especially given we know that their upcoming HPG-based GPUs support hardware ray tracing. At the end of the day, Red Gaming Tech did state that some of these could be based on earlier samples, but so far, Intel's upcoming XE gaming GPUs aren't looking to be all that powerful. And lastly for today, AMD just pulled an NVIDIA. 
While the company officially released FSR yesterday, which breathes new life into older GPUs, they also ended support for a ton of older GPUs. That's right, starting with their new 21.6.1 driver, AMD is ending support for Radeon Fury cards, 300 series and 200 series cards, as well as their HD 7000 and 8000 GPUs. That means the last driver they'll ever receive is 21.5.2. Now, with that said, I do have some good news. According to a tweet, FSR apparently does still work on these older cards, even without the newest driver or official support for FSR at all. It just likely won't be as good as cards with the new driver. Still, like I said, with Nvidia canceling support for Kepler cards, the issue is timing. It's literally been over six months since this graphics card shortage started, along with the subsequent price hikes. And while things are finally looking to calm down, prices are still astronomical. So yes, while these cards are older, though the Fury cards aren't that old, I mean we're talking 2015 here, but still, many years old, the issue is timing. Had this year been any other year with wide availability of AMD and Nvidia's newest GPUs, I wouldn't think anything of it. But that's not the case. I mean, just waiting one more year would have been a hundred times better in my opinion. Still, here we are. Hopefully those on the older cards can take advantage of FSR for now, but things will likely get pretty bad, pretty fast. So while that does it for today, are you running one of AMD's unsupported cards or have you picked up something new? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.